Okay, it's time to test our soil for texture, soil texture. And we're gonna use several methods in this class, but right now we're gonna do the soil texture by feel method. And luckily we have this beautiful flow chart that we're going to follow along with and uh, be able to determine with surprisingly good accuracy what our soil texture is like. What you're going to need is your soil that you've previously collected as your uh, soil to test. I like to put a little paper towel down and you're going to be using your hands and then uh, just a little bit of water. You can pour water out of a bottle. If you have a spray bottle that's fine. If you have a, any scientific instruments to apply water that's fine. Uh, but even just a bottle of water is going to be just fine for you. So let's follow along with our paper and let's get going here. Okay, so we follow the flow chart and you don't need to print this out. You can just follow the digital form, but we start up here with start and we're always going to follow the arrows. And then if it's a yes or no question, we will follow along and see what we need to do. So the first thing we do, place approximately 25 grams of soil in palm, add water drop wise, and knead the soil to break down all aggregates. Soil is at the proper consistency when plastic and moldable like moist putty. All right, so what the heck is 25 G's? that much so i always just fill up my palm make a little cup and if you can fill up your palm that's good so there we go there's our 25 grams i'm going to pull out these larger chunks here and if i find any rocks i'll pull them out okay now it says add water drop by drop but that's a little slow for my Patience? I don't have enough patience, so I'm just going to pour water in here carefully. And the key is to get it all evenly moist. Nice and wet. If you put too much water and it's dripping with liquid like that, that's okay. Add more dry stuff. Add more dry stuff. Get it nice and mixed. So I'm just playing with the dirt here. I'm getting a feel for it. What I want to do is make sure there's no dry spots. So get it nice and mixed up. Okay, that looks good. Now, uh, what does it say? It says, does the soil remain in a ball when squeezed? That's test number one. Look at that. Pull out this stick. Test number one, does it remain in a ball? Yes. If it does not remain in a ball, if the answer was no, the soil could either be too dry, in which case you add more water, or it could be too wet, in which case you add more soil until you can get it to stay in a ball. But if you keep trying to add more water and more soil and it does not stay in a ball, you're at the beach and you have pure sand. But almost everybody should be able to have their soil remain in a ball, which means you have something more than just sand. So yes, now here's test number two. Place the ball of soil between thumb and forefinger, gently pushing the soil with the thumb, squeezing it upward into a ribbon. Form a ribbon of uniform thickness and width. Allow the ribbon to emerge and extend over the forefinger, breaking from its own weight. So what the heck does that mean? So basically we're gonna make a snake, all right? So when you learned how to play with this in preschool, you made a ball and then you made a snake. 
So we're gonna be making something like this. Now, what's interesting is when I do this, I can feel a rock right here. Take that rock out. Just to kind of, I like to do this. This is the pre-test. Just to see, okay, what kind of snake is possible here? Now, what it's telling us to do is make a ribbon. So what is a ribbon? Well, it's kind of like a thin piece of soil. I try to go for about a quarter of an inch thick and I look for this knuckle. So I make a little hook with my finger and I'm gonna push this soil over the hook. And the key is I want this to break. I want gravity to break this apart. And what I wanna test is how long can I go before gravity breaks this apart. If you need to, you can add a little bit more soil and a little bit more water. Get yourself in this nice putty consistency. So here's my finger. I'm gonna push the soil over the finger and see how long it can go. Before it breaks. If it doesn't break at all, you may need to try to go thinner so that you can stretch it out further. Look at that. We have a break. Here is our break number one. Do that again. Do it at least twice. We're gonna check this, see how consistent our results are. Oh, see some breakage starting. Okay. It breaks always at the same point. As long as it's the same thickness, it should break at the same length. That's the key. You want to get several of these to break all at the same point. And then we know we've got good results. Okay, so what, uh, what does it say? Does it form a ribbon? In my case, the answer is yes. But if it does not form a ribbon at all, you've got loamy sand. So the answer is yes. Now we need to make a decision. Does the soil make a weak ribbon less than two and a half centimeters before breaking? So about an inch long. Yes or no? Does it make a medium ribbon? two and a half to five centimeters long before breaking? Or does it make a strong ribbon five centimeters or longer before breaking? So how long is that ribbon? Well, again, we don't have to be 100% perfect here, but I'm kind of on that Let's see, five centimeters. It's a little bit longer than five centimeters. If you were exactly five centimeters, you could kind of be on either one. But I'm gonna go longer than five centimeters. That is a strong ribbon. That was test number two. Test number three, excessively wet, a small pinch of soil in palm and rub with forefinger. So we take a small pinch of soil and we're going to excessively wet it more than we did last time. This is gonna be 
very wet. Could take a little bit more soil. There we go. And I am looking for how does this feel? Very smooth in the wet spots, but there's a decent number of rocks in here. And those rocks are a little bit gritty, but they're not too sharp. Sometimes soil kind of almost is like sandpaper and scratches you but mine is kind of round rocks. And the water part feels very smooth, almost like silk, very kind of slimy mixed in with the grittiness. If you've only ever done one sample, this is the part that's gonna be hard to interpret because you compare one to another and over time you get a really strong feel for it. But let's take a look. After we wet the small pinch of soil and rub it with our forefinger, I was in this category, so I follow this line. Is it very gritty? No. Is it very smooth? And parts of it were very smooth, but there were other parts that were a little bit gritty and it got cut off, but it's neither grittiness nor smooth. So that puts me in the category of clay. If it was very smooth, it would be a silty clay, but it's neither gritty nor smooth, so I've got clay. There we go. Now many of you are going to quickly say, I think I've got clay because it's compacted and it's really uh, tight, it's really hard to uh, work with. That's not necessarily the case. You can have many different kinds of soil and mixtures of texture, and that doesn't do anything to tell you about the structure or the arrangement. So remember that first key, can you make a ball? After you make a ball, can you make a ribbon? If so, how long is the ribbon? And then finally, is it gritty or is it smooth? You answer all of those questions and you will get yourself to one of many possible soil texture classifications.